What is up everyone, my name is Joseph and welcome back to Casually Competitive MTG where it's our goal to give you semi-competitive EDH gameplay content that is both fast-paced and entertaining. In today's episode, we are wrapping up Season 2 with our Season 2 finale. The winners of the last four seasonal games will be going head-to-head -head in just a few minutes to see who is the champion of Season 2. Before we get into the gameplay, I have some important announcements to tell you about. Firstly, we will be taking a two-week break from gameplay videos in order to prep for a merch release. However, if you didn't see our video yesterday, due to COVID-19, we aren't going to be meeting up in person to record games. So in light of this, we'll be increasing our stream quantity to two streams per week starting this Tuesday. So Tuesday and Friday nights, we'll be streaming over on Twitch.tv. Check out the link in the description and give us a follow there. We do plan on touching up and editing the webcam footage from the streams in order to continue releasing weekly gameplay videos after this momentary two-week break. So despite everything, we're going to do our very best to give you the most content that we possibly can. So again, check twitch.tv if you want to check out the weekly streams and expect more content moving forward. With that announcement out of the way, I do want to just let you know that we do have a Patreon if you want to help support us in that way. We have some changes to a few of the tiers in the very near future, so keep an eye out for that. We also have a TCG affiliate link in the description. If you click on that link, any card purchases you make in the near future will help out the channel at no additional cost to you. And finally, we have a Discord if you want to get to know us a little better and join the community. That all being said, let's get into the opening hands and deck introductions. Going first today, we have the winner from game number one, Jordan, playing Nekusar the Mind Razor. This wheel-based deck looks to get a lot of value off of wheels and payoffs, like Waste Knot, in order to get a lot of card advantage for himself, hurt his opponents through his commander's ability, until he can draw into one of his win conditions, the primary ones being a Notion Thief and a Wheel Combo, or a Demonic Consultation, Lab Man, or Thassa's Oracle. Jordan's opening hand contained five cards, and they were a Bloodstained Mire, a Chrome Mox, a Dark Ritual, a Cursed Totem, a Waste Knot, and due to the London Mulligan, he put a Mystical Dispute and a Mission Briefing to the bottom of his library. Going next, we have Nate playing Aloro Ageless Aesthetic. This deck looks to get a lot of advantage and value off of his commander's life gain ability to get massive ad nauses or just get a lot of value off of Necropotence, all while looking for one of his two main wins, the first one being an exquisite blood sanguine bond combo in order to drain his opponents, or another, again, demonic consultation lab man Thassa's oracle type effect. This is turning out to be a battle of the consults, however, Nate's opening hand contains seven cards, and those cards were a swamp, a polluted delta, a forbidden orchard, a mist Remora, a Stormscape Familiar, a Blind Obedience, and an Exquisite Blood. Going third, we have the winner from game number four, Joseph, playing Jaleva Nefalia Scourge. The goal of this deck is to get card advantage from casting his commander while looking for one of his win conditions, the main ones being Storm, Infinite Storm with Unsubstantiate, Dramatic Reversal, and Bonus Round, and then casting a huge Mind's Desire, or a Doomsday Pile, with the primary pile being a Gush, a Counterspell or Draw Spell, Thassa's Oracle, another counter or draw spell, and a reanimate. Joseph's opening hand contained a Steam Vents, a Watery Grave, a Pact of Negation, a Vampiric Tutor, a Flusterstorm, a Brawl Chief of Compliance, and a Thassa's Oracle. And finally, we have Adam playing the winning deck of game number three, and he's playing the commander Amanatsu the Fate Shifter. The goal of this deck is to be a little bit more controlly, all while looking for his win conditions, with the two primary ones being infinite ETB effects with a payoff, so for example, Felidar Guardian and his commander, plus an altar of the brood, milling his opponents, or a demonic consultation lab man. He does not run Thassa's Oracle out of his own personal distaste for it, however, he does run the combo with lab man. Adam's opening hand contained a plane a Command Tower, a Mana Crypt, an Altar of the Brood, a Flusterstorm, a Force of Negation, and a Jace Wielder of Mysteries. Now with the opening hands and deck introductions out of the way, let's get into the gameplay. Jordan starts off our Season 2 finale by drawing, playing a Bloodstained Mire as his land for turn, and then paying one life to crack it to shock in a Steam Vents paying two more life. He then for zero mana casts a Chromox, and when it enters, he imprints a Dark Ritual. He then taps his two mana sources to cast a Waste Knot. The Waste Knot resolves, and Jordan gives the turn to Nate. Nate, in his upkeep, gains two life from his commander's eminence ability, and he then draws for turn. He then plays a Polluted Delta as his land for turn, paying one life to crack it to shock in a Hollowed Fountain, losing two life. 
He then taps the Hollowed Fountain to cast a Mystic Remora. In response to the Mystic Remora, Adam exiles his Jace Wielder of Mysteries to cast Force of Negation without paying its mana cost, targeting the Mystic Remora. Mystic Remora is countered, and Nate gives a turn to Joseph. Joseph draws, and shocks in a watery grave, losing two life. With nothing to do, he gives the turn to Adam. Adam draws, plays a command tower as his land for turn, and then for one mana, casts an Altar of the Brood. In response, Joseph pays two life to cast Mental Misstep, targeting Altar of the Brood. The Altar is countered, and with the stack clear, Adam decides to pay zero mana to cast a Mana Crypt. He then taps the Mana Crypt to cast a Talisman of Progress. All set, he ships the turn over to Jordan. Jordan untaps, draws, and for one mana, casts a Sensei's Divining Top, misses his land drop, and ships the turn to Nate. Nate untaps and, in his upkeep, gains two life from his commander's eminence ability, and then draws a card for turn. In his main phase, he plays a Swamp as his land for turn, and taps his mana to cast a Stormscape Familiar. With nothing else, he goes to give the turn to Joseph. On Nate's end step, Joseph taps for one black mana to cast a Vampiric Tutor, which, when it resolves, allows him to search up a card to the top of his library, and he then loses two life. Joseph then goes to his turn, untaps, draws, and plays a Steam Vents as his land for turn, paying two life to have it enter untapped. He then, for two mana, casts a Dockside Extortionists. It enters the battlefield, and Joseph gains five treasures. He then sacrifices four of these treasures to cast his commander, Jaleva. It resolves, and when it enters the battlefield, everyone exiles the top four cards of his library, Joseph puts the instants and sorceries aside, and just as a little note, two of the cards exiled were Doomsday from Joseph and Ad Nauseam from Nate. With nothing else, however, Joseph gives the turn to Adam. Adam untaps and in his upkeep loses his mana crypt flip, taking three damage. He then draws and plays a Plains as his land for turn. With nothing to do, he ships the turn over to Jordan. On Adam's end step, Jordan taps for one mana to activate Sensei's Divining Top, looking at the top three, rearranging them, and then putting them back. Jordan then goes to his turn, untaps, draws, plays a Shivan Reef as his land for turn, and then ships the turn over to Nate. Nate untaps and, again in his upkeep, gains two life from his commander's eminence ability. He then draws and plays a Forbidden Orchard as his land for turn. He then taps his mana to cast an Anguished Unmaking, targeting Jaleva. Really wanting the spells underneath Jaleva's ability, Joseph, in response, taps for one blue mana to cast a Flusterstorm, targeting the Anguished Unmaking. Much to Joseph's dismay, however, Adam decides to tap for one blue mana to cast a Flusterstorm of his own, sending all of the copies at Joseph's Flusterstorms. Adam's Flusterstorm's copies resolve, and the Anguished Unmaking resolves, destroying Jaleva. Joseph decides to put Jaleva back to the command zone, and Nate then, for one mana, casts a Blind Obedience, giving Jordan a spirit from the Forbidden Orchard being tapped for mana. With nothing else, Nate gives the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps, draws, and taps his mana to cast a Baral Chief of Compliance. He then goes to pass the turn to Adam. On Joseph's end step, Adam taps for one mana to cast an Enlightened Tutor. It resolves and he searches up a Rhystic Study to the top of his library. Adam then goes to his turn, untaps, and in his upkeep, loses his Mana Crypt flip, taking three damage. He then draws his Rhystic Study, goes to his first main phase, and taps his mana to cast this Rhystic Study. In response, Jordan pays one mana to activate Sensei's Divining Top, rearranging the top three cards of his library, and Rhystic Study then resolves. With nothing left, Adam gives the turn to Jordan. Jordan untaps, draws, and then taps for 3 mana to cast a Wheel of Fortune, really hoping to fix his hand and get some value off of Waste Knot. He does not pay for Rhystic Study, however, Adam, not wanting to discard an extra card, decides to not draw off of Rhystic Study. Wheel of Fortune then resolves, everybody discards their hand, and off of the discards, Jordan draws 4 extra cards from Waste Knot, gets 1 zombie who enters the battlefield tapped due to Blind Obedience, and 2 black mana. Everyone then draws 7 cards, and Jordan then plays a Command Tower as his land for turn. He then uses some of his mana to cast an Arcane Signet, which enters the battlefield tapped, and allows Adam to draw a card due to not paying for Rhystic Study. He then, for 2 life, casts a Gitaxian Probe, targeting Adam and again not paying for Rhystic Study. 
The Gataxian probe resolves, he looks at Adam's hand, draws a card, and then goes to his end step and discards due to hand size. Nate then goes to his turn, untaps, gains 2 life from his commander's eminence ability, draws his card for turn, and plays an island as his land for turn. He then taps his mana, giving Jordan a tapped spirit from Forbidden Orchard in order to cast a Phyrexian Arena, paying for Ristic Study. With nothing else, he gives the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps, draws, plays an island as his land for turn, and then for one mana, casts a tapped soul ring, paying for Ristic Study. He then for one mana, casts a Preordain, allowing Adam to draw, scrying one card to the top, one to the bottom, and then drawing the card he scried to the top. With nothing else, he gives the turn to Adam. Adam untaps and in his upkeep wins his mana crypt trigger, not taking damage. He then plays an exotic Orchard Ass's land for turn, and then taps for one mana, taking a damage from the Talisman, to cast a Mystic Remora. In response to the Mystic Remora, Jordan taps for one black mana to cast a Vampiric Tutor, not paying for Ristic, allowing Adam to draw, and then, when it resolves, searches a card to the top of his library and loses two life. The Mystic Remora then resolves, and Adam taps for three mana to cast an Ashiok Dream Render. He decides to activate Ashiok's negative one ability, targeting Jordan, having him mill four cards, and then all opponent's graveyards get exiled. He then, for 2 mana, casts a Blind Obedience of his own. With nothing else, he goes to pass the turn to Jordan, and discards a Swamp to hand size, and gives Jordan 2 black mana, which immediately fizzles when Jordan goes to his turn, untaps, draws, and then taps for 2 mana to cast a Dockside Extortionist, not paying for Ristic Study, allowing Adam to draw. When it enters the battlefield, he gets 8 tapped Treasure Tokens. He then taps for one black mana to cast a Blood Chief's Ascension, again not paying his taxes, and Adam draws two cards. He then goes to combat and swings two spirits at Ashiok and one zombie at Adam's face. No blockers are declared, the damage is dealt, and Jordan then moves to his end step and Blood Chief Ascension gets one counter due to the damage dealt. Nate then goes to his turn. Untaps, in his upkeep, gains 2 life, draws a card and loses a life from Phyrexian Arena, and then he draws his card for turn. He plays a Mana Confluence as his land for turn, and then goes to combat and swings his Stormscape Familiar at Ashiok for 1 damage. The damage is dealt, and in his second main phase, he taps for 1 mana to cast a Graph Digger's Cage, paying for Ristic Study, but not paying for Mystic Remora, allowing Adam to draw, and he decides to extort it using Blind Obedience, dealing 1 damage to each of his opponents, and gaining 3 life. He then, for 2 mana, casts a Torpor Orb, which enters the battlefield tapped, and does not pay for Ristic Study. Joseph gets a tapped Spirit from the Forbidden Orchard being tapped for mana. With nothing else, Nate gives the turn to Joseph. Joseph untaps, draws, and plays a Wooded Foothills as his land for turn. He then goes to combat and swings his spirit at Ashiok, doing enough damage to kill it. He then cracks his Wooded Foothills, paying one life to search up a mountain to the battlefield. With nothing else, he gives the turn to Adam. Adam untaps and in his upkeep wins his mana crypt trigger, not taking any damage. He also, in his upkeep, pays one mana to keep Mystic Remora around. He then draws, and in his first main phase, plays a Nimbus Maze as his land for turn. He then taps his mana to cast a Smothering Tithe. Jordan, really not liking the amount of taxes that are on the board at this point, decides to tap for 2 mana to cast a Delay targeting the Smothering Tithe, not paying for either Mystic or Ristic, and in response to these two draw triggers, Adam taps for 2 mana to cast a Limb Duel's Vault. In response to the Limb Duel's Vault, Joseph taps for 2 blue mana to cast a Narset's Reversal, really just looking for some answers at this point. He pays for Ristic, but does not pay for Mystic, so Adam draws one card. Joseph's Limb Duel's Vault then resolves, and he looks at the top 5 cards, doesn't like what he sees, puts them down, looks at the next 5, losing 1 life, and decides to keep this pile shuffles his library, and puts those five on top of his library in any order. The Mystic and Ristic triggers off of Delay then resolve, Adam draws two cards, and then the Delay resolves, countering Smothering Tithe and suspending it with three time counters. Now finally with the stack clear, Adam for zero mana casts a Chrome Mox, exiling Baleful Strix when it enters. He then goes to his end step 
and has to discard 6 cards due to hand size. Off of these discards, Jordan makes 6 mana and gets 2 card draws and 1 tapped zombie from Waste Knot. The mana fizzles and Jordan goes to his turn. He untaps, draws, and decides to tap his mana to cast his commander Nekusar the Mind Razor, paying for Ristic Study this time. Nekusar resolves and now there's finally a downside to the Mystic and Ristic. Jordan then taps his mana to cast a Library of Lang, paying for Ristic, not for Mystic, and Adam then draws one card and loses one life. Jordan then taps for one red mana to cast a Winds of Change. He does not pay for either Mystic or Ristic, Adam draws two cards, loses two life, and then with his priority on the original Winds of Change, taps his mana to cast Fork. Again, not paying for either triggers, allowing Adam to draw, which he does, and Adam then loses two life from drawing with Nekusar on the battlefield. Priorities get around on Fork, and in response to Fork, Joseph decides to exile a blue card from his hand, pays one life, and casts a Force of Will targeting the Winds of Change, attempting to stop both pseudo wheels. He does not pay his taxes, and Adam draws two cards and loses two life. In response to the Force of Will, Jordan casts a Flusterstorm, targeting all of the copies at Force of Will, and again, not paying taxes, allowing Adam to draw two and lose two. In response to the Flusterstorm, Adam decides he hasn't lost quite enough life this turn, so he pays two life to cast a Mental Misstep targeting the Winds of Change, trying to preserve his life by not having to draw the amount of cards he has twice. There are finally no more responses, the Mental Misstep counters the Winds of Change, and then the stack then basically resolves itself and nothing happens. The stack is then cleared. Jordan, with his plans thwarted, decides to just play into this Mystic and Ristic, and for one mana, casts a tapped Mana Vault, allowing Adam to draw two and take two damage. He then, for zero mana, casts an LED, again allowing Adam to draw two and take two. He then goes to combat and swings his attackers at Adam for six damage. Adam declares no blockers, takes six, and Jordan then goes to his end step, and since a player has lost more than two life, Blood Chief's Ascension gets another counter. Nate then goes to his turn, untaps, and in his upkeep gains two life from his commander, and draws a card off of Phyrexian Arena, losing two life, one from Nekusar, one from the Arena. He then draws two cards for turn, one extra from Nekusar, and takes two more damage. He then goes to combat and swings his Stormscape Familiar at Adam for one damage. In his second main phase, he plays an Ancient Tomb as his land for turn, and then pays 2 life to cast a Gataxian Probe targeting Joseph. He does not pay for either of his taxes, and Adam decides to draw 2 and take 2. The Gataxian Probe then resolves, Nate looks at Joseph's hand, and he then draws a card and takes a damage. He then for 3 mana casts a Toxic Deluge, paying 3 life into the spell, not paying for either Mystic or Ristic, however, decides to not draw off of these triggers. The Toxic Deluge then resolves, wiping the board of everything except for Nekusar, and Nathan uses his mana to cast a Jace, Wielder of Mysteries. It resolves and he activates its plus 1 ability to target Joseph to mill him for 2. In response to the activation, Joseph returns two islands to his hand in order to cast Gush. He does not pay his taxes, but Adam decides to not draw. Gush then resolves, Joseph draws two cards, takes two damage, and he then mills two off of the Jace activation, and Nate then draws one card and loses one life. He then passes the turn. Joseph then goes to his turn, draws two cards, one extra due to Nekusar, loses two life, replays one of his islands, and then gives the turn to Adam. Adam untaps and in his upkeep wins his mana crypt trigger, not taking damage. He then also decides to pay for Remora. He then draws two cards in his draw step, loses two life. He then plays a Sun Scorched Desert as his land for turn, and when it enters the battlefield, has it deal one damage to Joseph. He then, for 2 mana, casts a Demonic Tutor, paying an extra mana to extort it, dealing 1 damage to his opponents and gaining 3 life. He then picks up his library, looking for an out, and as we mentioned in the seasonal video that this was in, he does not play Thassa's Oracle and cannot afford to draw, and he just doesn't have the cards in hand that he needs, and decides to pull an Adam special and searches up something special to his hand. 
He then taps his mana to cast an Oath of Kaya, and when it enters the battlefield, he decides to have it deal 3 damage to himself, taking himself out of the game rather than going to discards and letting Blood Chief Ascension finish him off. He then loses the game, and the turn passes to Jordan. Jordan untaps and draws 2 cards. He then, for 2 mana, casts a Demir Signet, which enters the battlefield tapped. He then taps for 3 mana to cast a Rhystic Study. He then goes to combat and swings Nekusar at Jace for 2 damage. He then goes to pass the turn to Nate. Joseph, in Jordan's end step, taps for 4 mana to flash out a Notion Thief, trying to hopefully find an answer to this Jace on the battlefield. Nate then goes to his turn, untaps, and in his upkeep, gains 2 life from Aloro and loses 1 life to Phyrexian Arena. Joseph draws the card instead, Joseph loses 1 life. And then Nate goes to his draw step, drawing one, losing one, and Joseph draws the Nekusar draw, and also loses one life. Nate then, in his first main phase, taps for three black mana to cast a Necropotence, paying for Jordan's Rhystic Study. He then taps for one black mana, giving Joseph a tapped 1-1 spirit from Forbidden Orchard being tapped for mana, to cast a Demonic Consultation. It resolves, he decides to name Jace Wielder of Mysteries, exiles his library, and then activates Jace's plus one ability to mill Jordan for two, and then draw a card. Now, the Notion Thief would normally replace the draw with allowing Joseph draw instead. However, since there are two replacement effects in effect for this card draw, one being to let Joseph draw and the other being to win the game, since Nate is the active player, he can choose to allow his to resolve first, so he wins the game before Joseph draws a card, and so Nate wins the game. Let me start off this outro to this video by saying I understand that we get a lot of dislike for the Demonic Consultation combo. We have replanned and restructured our Season 3 to fit what people are looking for a little bit more, and I think you will enjoy the pod structure a little bit more of Season 3. However, I think this game was a good example on how Demonic Consultation doesn't necessarily always have to rule a game. There were three console decks in this game, and really, there was a win off of Demonic Consultation in the end, but the entire game was leading up to it was still incredibly interactive and exciting, and games like this is why we personally enjoy playing these higher powered games. The massive amount of interaction and just potential from winning from everyone keeps the games a little bit more suspenseful and engaging for us while playing. That being said, I do want to point out a few good cards and good plays in this game, so let's get into it. The most valuable card for this game I will have to give to Nekusar, which is weird to say because personally I'm not a big fan of this card. This card generates a lot of value for the opponents of the player, but in this game specifically it did a really good job to counteract the value that Adam was trying to get with Mystic and Rhystic. Adam was having a hard time drawing into the spells he needed to win, and Nekusar being on the battlefield really just put a timer on his head. So he decided to play it a little bit riskier, draw all of the cards he could, and then between the Blood Chief Ascension and the Nekusar, he just was not able to get there. So Nekusar really had a high impact on this game. One part of the game that I do want to talk about really briefly and kind of open it up for discussion since it did spark a little bit of discussion within our own playgroup was the turn one cycle, so the first turn of plays. The specific play I want to mention is the countering of Mystic Remora instead of Waste Knot. Now normally you really don't want to see a turn one fish, but you also don't want to see a wheel player have access to Waste Knot as if you've seen the previous Nekusar games, a card like that is just insanely valuable and just wins games really, just gets you to where you need to go. So how do you know when it's the right time to counter a Mystic Remora or some other really good value piece? Now personally, I side with Adam on this. I think the Mystic Remora was the correct counter knowing what he had in hand. However, there was some disagreements and we had a little bit of a discussion. Now the reasoning I think that the Mystic Remora was the correct counter is due to that hand that Adam had. Adam had an Altar of the Brood, he had a Mana Crypt, and he had a lot of early game plays. He knew from looking at his hand that if he could pull something nice off the top like a Tutor or something that could pull him into Felidar Guardian, he would have early mana available in order to get Altar of the Brood online, but he needed to be able to spend the first 1-2 to two turn cycles ramping up. And chances are that Mystic Remora was going to stick around for a few turns, so he was really relying on the fact that he could ramp out fast enough and find the pieces that he needed early enough to where Waste Knot wouldn't have a large impact. Adam was playing for the greedy and short game, but I think that is generally the right type of play with the hand that he had and with his game plan. He would have wanted to play his commander early, he would want to play those early mana rocks, and he would not want to be giving 
nate that value. In general, I think this decision really just comes down to some threat assessment based on how impactful you think the different decks are and based on what your game plan is. Adam wanted to win before Jordan was able to get his value, and in order for Adam to do that, he needed Nate to not be drawing 4 or 5 cards off of his turn 1 to 2. So that was just a quick instance of something that I thought was interesting in this game, and I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about it. Would you have countered the Waste Knot? Would you have countered the Mystic Remora? Or would you have held on to the counter for a later turn? With that being said, that is all we have for this episode and really for Season 2. There will be a fan favorites coming out in the near future, but for the most part, Season 2 has been completed and we hope you enjoyed it. Like I've said a few other times, we wanted to use this season as an experiment to see what people liked in terms of commander choices and deck power levels, and we think we have a little bit of a better grasp on what people are looking to see, so we think you'll really enjoy what Season 3 and 4 have in store. We've gone ahead and planned those seasons, and they'll change a little bit, but for the most part, we really think you'll enjoy what Season 3 and 4 have in store in terms of commanders and in terms of power level. That all being said, we hope you enjoyed this video. I am Joseph, this is Casually Competitive MTG, and we will see you next time.